Sissonville, West Virginia. And Sissonville is named after one of my great-grandfathers, John Sisson, who once owned all the land there. And across the river, the Gibsons bought land, and the two families intermarried. And my mother was a Gibson. One of the Gibson ancestors actually came over into Greenbrier County because he had heard about the hot springs there being healing. And so he bought land and established a health resort. And it became, guess what? The Greenbrier. So you got deep roots. Well, they go even deeper than that. My uh, father's family is from all over Jackson County. And he, one of his ancestors owned the land where Ripley is and settled that area. So anyway, one of my favorite stories that my uh, great-grandmother told me, she was still alive when I was a youngster, is that her great-grandmother said, Daniel Boone, that dirty old frontiersman, he keeps coming out here and he needs a bath. And I thought it was, you know, a nice story, but but then I checked the dates and I realized, yeah, he, he was in the valley at the time that that great-grandmother would have been alive. Daniel Boone. Wow. And out here would have been Sissonville later. I ended up teaching at, uh, at Wesleyan. And of course, um, uh, I was there when Jay Rockefeller was president. In fact, I was on the search committee. <laughs> and uh, I had gone to school with Bill Watson, his campaign manager. I said, well, I have an idea. And I called Bill and I said, Bill, I know he's lost the election, but he wants to stay in West Virginia. Do you think he would even consider becoming president of Wesleyan for a few years? And Bill practically yelled at me over the phone. Stay there. Don't go away. <laughs> and, so, and the rest is history because Jay showed up in Buchanan. Well, that was a wonderful thought. How, <laughs> how did you think of that? Well, because I, I had just read or heard that, that Jay was, well, what, what was he going to do? Looking to for in, work. <laughs> yeah, what was he going to do to stay in West Virginia? He couldn't become a, okay. a storekeeper or a coal miner. He had to do something in keeping with the position. And so well, uh, I love the fact that he never uh, had any money on him. And so we always, people in the cafeteria line always had to loan him money. But, um, and, and people at Wesleyan like Jay, and he, he will tell you today that those were four of the best years of his life. He really enjoyed those years. But he did always pay the money back that he had to borrow. Uh, I was going to do my doctoral dissertation originally on uh, uh, body language in Faulkner's novels. I was an English major. And I was walking across the campus at Maryland, and I heard these two people talking. And I thought, they're Appalachian. I recognized their accents, and I stopped to talk to with them. I'm sure they were. And I thought, I'm going to see if I can find an advisor who will allow me to write a dissertation on Appalachia, which I know a heck of a lot more about than I do about Faulkner's Mississippi. And it took some persuasion. But I ended up eventually doing um, 165 hours of interviews here in the hills of West Virginia. Did a grid map, worked it all out, traipsed up and down. The worst problem I had, of course, is I had out-of-state license plates. And I had to convince those people that I was a West Virginia native. And one lady tested me. She was in her garden when I got there. And she said, hmm. You say your mother still lives here in West Virginia? I said, yes. She says, well, does she like vegetables? And I said, oh, of course. And she said, go up to the house there on the porch and bring me back a poke. And when I went up to the house and came back with the paper bag, <laughs> she said, you're West Virginian. Those people from out of state <laughs> never know what a poke is. When you first walked into this home, there was some work to be done. Oh, that was kind of an understatement. <laughs> Tell me about that. Well, the house had not been lived in for a couple of years. Um, oh. Because Lou McManus was the interim president, and he lived in his own apartment. And so, um, first of all, it was all dark inside. Everything, the paint was very dark, and the woodwork was very dark. And um, the outside was a tomato red color. And I thought, Oh, <laughs> and so I think the best thing I did, as far as the neighbors were concerned, was had the outside of the house painted white, you know, right away with the yellow shutters. But I looked at the interior and I thought, oh, I can't live with all this dark woodwork and dark walls because obviously uh, 
I'm very much a color person when you look around the house right now. 